Hello students, welcome to this video tutorial on measures of central tendency review. Now it's very important that you have a calculator handy, either your own calculator or you can use the one on your device or you can use the one in uh, accessories on your computer. Okay, You've got to have a calculator to do these calculations. So it is a review. I'm assuming that you did learn this in grade 6 and that you spent a considerable amount of time on it. So here we go, review. We have all of the definitions up at the top here. So mean is the average value in a data set. Average is the very important word here. So if you need to highlight that word or underline it, please do. Okay. Median is the middle value in a data set that has been arranged in numerical order. So I'm actually going to switch to a highlighter here. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to highlight the important kind of terms here in each definition. So for the mean, the average is the important word to highlight or underline. For median is the middle value. That's very important. And then, of course, all the data has to be arranged in numerical order. Numerical order means lowest to the highest. So let's go to the mode. The mode is the value that occurs most frequently, most frequently in a data set. There can be more than one mode. And range, range is the difference between the highest and the lowest value. Difference, of course, whenever you hear the word difference, you have to um, uh, make a parallel to a mathematical operation. Mathematical operation, difference is subtraction. Okay, so you need to work these out with me, okay? Don't just copy them. I want you to work them out on your calculator here. I've got my calculator open. Okay, so part one is mean. Find the mean of these given numbers, 5 and 12. Well, the average. So what we do with the average is, I want you to show all your steps. The first step in finding the average is you add all the numbers together to find a sum. So if we do mental math, 5 plus 12 is 17, or you can use your calculator, 5 plus 12 is 17, okay? All right, now average. It's not just about the sum because the sum and the average are two different things. We need to find the sum before we can get the average. So next, what we have to do is for average, we have to use division, okay? So we have two operations. First, we have addition to find the sum and then division. Now, what do we divide by? Well, we divide by the number of pieces of data. So let's look at our data. We have one, two pieces of data. So we're going to divide by two. Okay. So if we go over here, use your calculator, 17 divided by two. Now remember on this type of computer calculator, this slash is the division sign equals. And then what you get, you got 8.5. Okay. So I want you to write the answer here, 8.5. So I'm doing the question. I want you to do the question as well. All right, let's write a therefore or a conclusion statement here. Therefore, mean is, I don't need full sentences, mean is 8.5, okay? All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to press pause, and then I want you to calculate the mean for the second example, and then press play when you've got an answer, and then you're going to check your answer with mine, okay? So press pause at this point. Okay, so now that you're back, I'm going to assume that you've got an answer. So again, I want you to show all your work. I don't just want you to do everything on your calculator because I, I won't know what you've done. So you got to prove what you've done. So let's write the answers. Uh, sorry, the pieces of data, 4 plus 7 plus 15 plus 21 plus 29. So I got a sum of 76. I worked this out beforehand. So hopefully you got 76. Actually, I don't trust myself. I'm going to check it again. So 4 plus 7 plus 15 plus 21 plus 29 equals 76. Yes. All right. Now we've got to use division when we're doing average. Dividing by how many pieces of data were there? There were one two, three, four, five. We divide by five. Okay. 76 divided by five is 76 divided by five is 15.2. Now don't be afraid of decimal answers here. The good thing about 
these two questions is we only had one decimal place in our answer. Sometimes we get a really messy decimal, and I'll give you instructions on what we're going to do with that. Okay? All right. So therefore, that's right. Don't forget your conclusion statement. Therefore, mean is 15.2. Okay? So this symbol here, the triangle made out of circles, is the therefore statement. Okay? So that's mean. So I hope that's coming back to you. I hope you remember that from last year. All right, let's go on to part two. Part two is median. Let's just review. Median is the middle value in a data set that has been arranged in numerical order. So this is very important here, numerical order. So when we look at our data set, whenever we have numbers here, this is called the data set, let's write these numbers in numerical order. So we scan them and we find the lowest number. So the lowest number is three. So this is kind of step one of median. We have to arrange the numbers in numerical order. So what I do is I just make sure I put a little check mark above it. All right, so what's the next number in numerical order? Looks like it's 14. Okay, so again, if you kind of get this, then you can get a little bit ahead of me. So I've taken care of the 14. Let's put a little check mark above it. So what's the next largest number in numerical order? Well, looks like it's 21. So let's continue. Make sure you put a comma in between the numbers. Put a check mark here. Now the reason why I'm checking them off is so that I can visually see that number that number has been accounted for. All right, so the next number is 31. And then the last number, the highest number in the data set is 56. Okay? All right, so we've taken care of the first step. We write the numbers in numerical order. Now, all we have to do is find the middle number. So what you want to do is you want to count from the outside. So we have one on the outside, one on the outside. We come in one, we come in one, and then in this case, we've got one number in the middle, okay? The middle value. All right, so the middle value is 21. So let's write a therefore statement. Therefore, median is 21. Okay, pretty easy. All right, let's go on to example two. Find the median of these given numbers. So what I want you to do is I want you to press pause here, but before you do that, I want you to look at these numbers and arrange them in numerical order. And then I'm, I think that uh, what you're going you're gonna to find something new, okay? You're going to find something different about this data set. So come back to me when you've got the numbers in numerical order. So press pause now. Okay, so what happens is when we write these numbers in numerical order, hopefully I've got the right order. We've got 16, 47, 65, and 98. So if we count from the edges or we count from the ends, something funny is going to happen. So if we eliminate the first value and the last value, and then we move in one, we actually don't have a middle number because we have an even number of numbers. So we always end up with this situation when we have an even number of pieces of data. So what we have to do with these two numbers is we have to do one more step. Okay, and that step is then we take the mean of the two numbers, not the median. We're trying to find the median, but this is the rare case where we actually have to use mean. So let's use the first number, 47. And then we're going to add it to the second number in the middle. So we're going to take the average. Okay, so let me go over here. Hopefully you're working it out with your calculator. 47 plus 65 equals. And then we're going to divide it by 2 because there are two pieces of data, right? There are two pieces of data here, 47 and 65. Don't look at the original data set. That had four pieces of data. But we're only trying to find the mean of these numbers. Okay, so let me go back one. I first have to write down what was my sum. My sum was 112, okay? And then I'm going to divide it by 2 to get 56. So even though this number 56 does not appear in the data set, it is the median of this data set. So therefore, 
median is 56. So this is one thing to remember. When you have an even number of pieces of data, you're going to have to find the mean of the middle two numbers. All right. So let's move on to the next section. Mode. So let's review again what the definition of mode is. Mode is the value that occurs most frequently in a data set. There can be more than one mode. So the best way to go about calculating mode is to, again, write the numbers in numerical order. So let's do that, okay? So again, if you can be a little bit faster than me, that'd be great. So example one, find the mode for this data set. So let's look for the smallest number. The smallest number is one. So I'm going to write that down and put a check mark above it. So that number's taken care of. So let's scan this set. So what's the next highest number? It looks like I've got a three. Okay, let's scan down here. I don't have any other three, so let's see. I've got a four. And then if I scan down, I can see I've got another four. Okay? So this piece of data here, this four, is a different piece of data than this four. So don't just assume they are the same thing. They are not. All right, so let's keep scanning. It looks like I've got a five. Check that off. Looks like I've got a six. Check that off. Looks like I've got another six here. Okay. And then I'm almost done. I've got an eight. And then I've got a nine. So what I always do is I always count the number of data in the data set. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of data. Make sure I've got nine pieces of data in my list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now remember the mode is the value that occurs most frequently. So let's scan our list here. So are there any numbers that appear more than once? We've got here two fours and we've got two sixes. None of the numbers appear three times and all of the other numbers appear just once. So in this case, there are two modes, okay? So modes are... four and six because these two numbers appeared most frequently now here's a little bit of vocabulary that I want you to be using here in this case whenever we have two modes it's called bimodal bimodal now if we have three or more modes it's called multimodal so if you really want to sound smart throw around that vocabulary okay all right so let's go on to example two. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to press pause. I'd like you to work this out. And then when you come back, I will have the answer completed as well. OK, so I want you to press pause. I'm going to do the same. OK, I'm back. So I've got all my numbers written in numerical order. And it looks like the number that appears overwhelmingly the most number of times is the number two. And I've got it appearing six times. So hopefully I've done that right. Let's just look at the data set. One, two, three, four, five, six times. So I haven't written my therefore statement. Therefore, in this case, it's just a single mode. Mode is the number two. Now it's not six. Mode is 2, because 2 is the number from the data set. Okay, so now we're on to part 4, range. Let's look again at the definition. Range is the difference between the highest and lowest value in a data set. And I've written the clue here. The operation we're going to use is subtraction. So I'm going to go over here and clear my calculator. All right, so find the range for this data set. So let's look for the highest value. The highest value here... Go just write me a little no here. High is 9 centimeters. So I'm going to write that down. 9 centimeters, subtract. And then what's the lowest piece of data here? So it looks like I've got 3 centimeters here. So I'm just going to mark that as low. So highest value, 9 centimeters, subtract the lowest value equals 6 centimeters. Now in this data set, the units were given. So I'm going to work with those units in my answer. So therefore range is 
six centimeters. Highest value subtract the lowest value. Okay, so let's go on to example two. Fairly simple. Let's see if you can do this for yourself. I'm going to kind of pause a sec. I'm going to give you a little head start. I want you to identify the high number, identify the low number, and subtract them. All right, so I've identified the high value as 5.7 and the low value as 2.9. So hopefully I did that right. Hopefully you did it right. And then when I use my calculator to subtraction, subtract them, 5.7 subtract, 2.9 is 2.8. So therefore, my therefore statement, therefore, range is... 2.8. There were no units given in the data set, so there are no units given in my answer. So hopefully that came back to you. Hopefully you remember a little bit from last year, but even if you don't, at least you've got a note here so that you can work on these types of problems. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.